Hey guys, we're back with more of the Inseparable Sword run. We're gonna make our way into Volcano Manor. We gotta go down to the bottom of Ravicaria and die. This actually, I think, is the first death, or will be the first death of the run. Can be willingly, willingly choosing to end a currently deathless run five hours in, in New Game Plus. I think, I think it's the first death. I don't know if I died in the first two hours. And if I didn't, then it's deathless. Not for long, though. Well, again, aside from the grafted scion and scripted death, can't really avoid that. You have to die in the Chapel of Anticipation. Down we go to Volcano Manor once we get eaten. Eat me. So we're five hours through. We probably have... Hmm. I'll know where we are once we get to... Oh my god, don't... I need, I need to... Okay, this is bad. I'm gonna heal. Get the snakes! Give me the snakes! Thank you, Jesus Christ. Once we get to Magma Worm Makar, which hopefully we'll get to in the next hour, I'll know where we are. Boss-wise, I should say. I'll know where we are boss-wise. We're at 82 once we hit Magma Worm Makar. I don't know where we are right now, though. We're probably like 10 off of that or something like that. Maybe a little more than 10. Because we're going to do some stuff in Altus. I think we have eight bosses here. We have three in Kaelid and then like another five or six or seven in Lyurnia. I don't know. That's why, like, once we get to probably, hmm, maybe the Retta or something. I don't know. If I, if I had to think about it, I could I could tell you, but I don't want to think about it, honestly. We're almost halfway. I'll leave it at that. Probably just under 70 bosses through. God skin noble. Got him still. Worth it. Oh, nice. Assume we're gonna get a belly blast here. Yep. Eh, do it. Tad a feeling. I'll hit him. Noble Presence. All right, let's level up. More Endurance. Abductor Virgin Duo. It's a nice shot of Volcano Manor right here, just right there. Maybe an even better one over here. Eh, not so much. Not with the ledge. That does look kind of cool, though, with all the uh, cages there. I'm always looking for cool shots for thumbnails. This does not feel like the right spot to drop for some reason. I don't know why. I've done this drop so many times. Yeah, this would be cool if not for... Like, if I could get around the corner, it'd be kind of neat, because now I'm just kind of looking at a wall from right here. I'm like... God, I don't even know how many different thumbnail backgrounds for these videos. Probably like 60-something, and it, it still doesn't feel like that many. I reuse a bunch. I mean, I reuse them all eventually, but there's some I reuse more than others. I think in the Godskin Peeler run, I reused the same one like twice in a run. <laughs> it's probably, it's not really a big deal or anything, but I try not to do that. I try not to reuse like any within the same, within like three runs. But that was back when I was like first taking them. When you get like a long run, it's kind of nice because then you're kind of forced to take a bunch. Like if you have like a 20 part run or something. You have to take a bunch of them. And then because I don't want to reuse them on the next two runs, I'll have to take probably more for, uh, for that, you know, because I don't want to reuse them. 
and then you just have a huge library of thumbnails. But I find it like harder to do in the Dark Souls games. It's very easy in Elden Ring just because there's so much in the game. But in the Souls games, I find it harder to find good thumbnails, ones I like anyway. Good shots of, uh, you know, could be anything. Especially if you have like dark areas too. That's another tough thing is like taking pictures in very dark areas. I have one for Dark Souls 1. It's literally just the abyss with a bonfire. Because <laughs> what else is there? It's just black. So I'm like, hey, I'll throw the bonfire in and they'll know where I am. And it's not just like a, ba a black background. But like even right out here, once we once we get down to this cave, there's probably a nice shot. Let's take a look. Elden Ring just does this over and over again, where like you go out, you leave a tunnel and then it's just like, oh my God, look at that. You know, if you uh, sat right here. Turn this off. Sit down. Just like that. It's actually isn't a bad one. Now I have to use that for the video. All right, Wyndham Catacombs next. And then the Tibby Mariner. I need some more in dungeons too. But again, dungeons have the same problem where like it's just dark or it's just like really cramped. They can be hard to get a good shot. I usually do like boss arenas a lot. I did Melania's boss arena for the first time in, uh, in the Hannah Melania run. I had done 50 something runs and I never once used Melania's boss arena for a thumbnail. I used the hand tree a bunch, but never the arena. The problem with that arena is once you once you rest, I think, then the flower blooms and then I don't know the flowers there. Actually, that probably wouldn't look too bad, to be honest, but I kind of like it without the flower before you've done the fight. OK, we got a memory of grace out of here. I should have Look to see if I could level, but I don't think I can. Nope. Mm, I guess we'll just do this. That works. Oh, don't leave. Got to do the boss. Did that on a rod once. Not here, but in another dungeon. I, I memory of graced out and just left the dungeon without doing the boss. The Noble Slender Sword run. It was the Grave Warden Duelist and Arisa side to him. I just didn't do it. Because I was distracted. I was streaming. And that can be distracting at times. You know, if I had to time these runs, I have a feeling the YouTube runs would be faster on average just for the fact that I am less distracted. Also, the fact that I don't take breaks and just sit there for three minutes while I'm in the game. Because on like a 10 hour run, that's probably adding an extra half an hour. And, you know, these runs are probably like 12, so you're talking another 30 something minutes. But the two fastest sheltering runs are YouTube runs. I still can't believe the Rusted Anchor run, man. That run, like, is so much faster than, like, anything else. Like, I had other runs I thought were fast. And they're nothing compared to the Rusted Anchor. They're, like, hours slower than that run. I don't know how it was so fast. I didn't miss anything either. Like I was convinced I'd miss something, but I went back and I checked. Whenever I do the timestamps, I always check to make sure I've done everything. I missed nothing. It was just that quick. Must have just not died that much either. Because that definitely will add some time. There's another thumbnail I think I've taken. Somewhere in here. Couldn't tell you where exactly, but 
Definitely have a shot of... Actually, you know what? No, I do. I have a shot of this. Oh, I forgot the uh, golden seed. We'll get that later. We're gonna go right back there. Altus is just really pretty. Kilika. Then we get the ritual, sh sh ritual sword talisman, not shield. Kilika is also a super pushover. Yeah, we're going to do some stuff in Altus now. We're going to do some stuff in Kaelid, then Lyurnia, and then we'll come back to Altus probably. I assume we'll get back here after Lyurnia. Let me take off this, I think. I think we'll do Ritual Sword. Yeah, that'll work. Godefroy. Or Godefroy. I don't know how you say his name. I've always said Godefroy. I don't know if there really is a correct way to say it. I feel like this wouldn't be a bad shot either, honestly. Like, just the trees? Be kind of nice. Probably not something I'm going to do right now, though. Oh, Stone Sword Key. Can't wait to do it for the DLC, too. Like, so many new thumbnails for the DLC I'll get to take. So many new shots of... whatever that area is called. Shadowlands. I say that and I just think about Baldur's Gate 3, honestly. Act 2. Am I on the wrong side of him? I think I am. Now we're fine. I'm gonna be on his left side. Music, why'd you cut out? You know, I never got an ever jail picture. Where everything's just black. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like there's so many things in Elden Ring you can take pictures of for thumbnails, and somehow I still feel like I never have enough. And Altus is tough, too, because there's just so many bosses in Altus that I don't want to, like, do two Altus thumbnails back to back for the same run. I feel like you gotta maybe, like, do a dungeon one and then an Altus one or something. I mean, I've definitely done back to back Altus runs or Altus thumbnails on a run before, but not something I try to do. But again, it's completely dependent on what is before, you know, the runs before. If all the ones I would like to use are already used, then I gotta do something else. Definitely can do something in a tunnel. I never do this. I don't think I have a picture in a tunnel whatsoever. Tunnels are pretty distinct looking, though. As are catacombs. The caves are a little more unique, kind of, just because they have different colors. Actually, I just did one in Cave of the Forlorn, but I didn't really like it because I thought it was too dark. In my mind, that cave is so much brighter than I think it is. Or than it actually is, rather. Ow. Like, you could easily do this room. Not going to, but pretend I'm not here, you know? You could do this room. That could be a... Could be one. Anyways, let's get out of here. It's all behind the scenes stuff. Already have one of the shaded castle. The toughest thing, I think, too, is just getting your character out of the shot. Not so hard in this game, because you can just do the rest emote or gesture, but it's a lot harder in Dark Souls 2. 
Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. If you don't have a character with the right gesture, it can be kind of annoying. Dark Souls 1, I think there is a rest emote. Or maybe not. I don't know. But I don't have one because all my characters are just boss files that don't have any gestures. So it can be pretty annoying to get a new background. You gotta be, you know, you have to have a wall. You gotta be against a wall for pretty much any of them, I guess, really. Demon Souls is really easy with the phone mode, though. That's one nice thing. But Demon Souls series aren't that big, so I feel like I can't get too much of a variance on the backgrounds, especially in the boss arenas. Like, I mean, that's just kind of boss arenas are the same. Like, you really can't get more than one in a boss arena. I guess you could technically, but I don't really want to have more than one. I don't even know how I started talking about this. <laughs> I don't remember. Random, uh, random subject to bring up and continue on about for at least 10 minutes. We'll see if I actually remember to use the, uh, picture I took for this one. I might forget. Because usually by the time I'm doing thumbnails, the videos have been up for, uploaded for, like, a couple days, probably. And, uh, I don't know if I'll remember that I talked about this. Oh, actually, this this room would be a good one. Get a shot of Melania. Need to probably respawn to get all the furniture back, though. Can we not destroy any furniture? Nope, too late. That'd be cool. This guy's so inconsiderate. He does not respect wood. Can you be Elden Ring without destroying any furniture? Or anything, period. Now let's take a look. Hang on. Just, uh... Like this or something. The grace. I try not to put graces in the shot either, but this could work. Anyways, we're gonna leave. We're going to Kaelid. Kaelid, Kaelid, here. Kaelid looks nice, but I feel like Kaelid doesn't have the moments that all the other areas have, where you get funneled through like a tiny little entrance, and then it, you know, you see like the big open area ahead of you. Like the one spot I can think of that happening in Kaelid is the swamp when you come out of Celia Crystal Tunnel. That's like the one point that I can think of. Because the other ways to come here are you get warped to the Dragon Barrow or you just walk from Limgrave. I don't think there's any other way. I'll level up here. Actually, hmm, yeah, I'll level up. Why not? It's like two levels. Probably could have waited, but it's fine. We'll do, you know, we'll do one mind, one endurance. That works. Cemetery Shade. Should be pretty easy. These guys aren't too bad. I might even put read the Sacred Blade, but... Other than that, I think we'll be okay. Just whack them. Well, oh, come on, really? He can do quite a bit of damage, though, if you're not careful. He lunges pretty far and the bleed. Well, that works. Like, he can, he can really hurt you. Damage will sneak up on you. Alright, after War Dead, we gotta remember to go to the round table. And do Fia's quest. And then I don't know at what point D dies after you give him the dagger. Maybe just any time, I don't know. Or maybe it's on Lane Dale access, I don't really know. Like, we could get to Lane... Actually, no, we can't. We don't have two Great Ruins. I just have one. We will after this, but I don't know. We'll see. Need to give the armor to Darian. Devin, sorry. Always get those two confused. I don't really understand. Sophia gets the dagger, right? And she says that she's trying to give it back to the original owner. I don't know who the original owner is. I don't know if it's Devin. Darian takes it. But Darian ends up dead. Like, I, I don't understand the what's going on there. I don't know if they explain it, or maybe maybe they do, and I just 
Haven't bothered to learn. I'm ready. Yeah, I guess we're not gonna see Roger's tie in to the quest line, but that's okay. I don't even remember how it ties in, to be honest. I think he talks about D or something. He leads you to the Black Knives hideout, or Black Knife Catacombs, which I guess is their hideout. I don't know how they all lived there, though. General Radon. Honestly, that's a pretty good shot, too, right there. Although I have a shot in here somewhere. Oh, he hit the thing. I was wondering if he would actually be able to even hit me from this close. Stagger. Nice. Don't think we're gonna one cycle. I, I yeah, I don't have the damage to one cycle him. I'll take that though. It's pretty decent. goes. Good night, Redon. Demigod filled! Waynedale access acquired. Alright, Warhead Catacombs and then Round Table. Dorn looks so happy. I think. Maybe. How many more days till DLC? It's a ways away. 87, maybe, from from where I am in time, anyway. Some of you might watch this after the DLC is out. And all I have to say is you're lucky. Although you might have gone through the same waiting that I'm going through now. And countless others are going through now. Sometimes it's nice getting to things late, though, you know? I mean, I got to the whole Soul series late. I didn't start playing until... 2020, I think, or 2021, one of the two. I don't know, I have to go back and look at my achievements for Dark Souls 1, I can tell you then. I want to say 2021, but it also could be 2020. But it also is cool to be, you know, around when things are coming out. You get to see, like, the live patches and how everything is while the game's still alive and the development cycle's still going on. Like, that's pretty neat. So after this, we got one more Kaelid boss, which we're not gonna do until essentially the end of the run. And then the last 10 bosses. I don't know if these guys are wholly resistant, honestly. I don't think he is. I think he's just tanky. No. Kill. 
This guy. No. Oh. You can roll that. I just, I don't know the timing of that attack, honestly. Oh, that sucks. How bad is that rot? Is that bad? I don't think it's bull is bad. Oh, he's breathing. I thought he was going to explode. Another golden seed, and we're going to the round table. Oh, yeah, Encha. I am actually so used to not having to fight Encha in New Game Plus because I never come back here. Because I don't need to upgrade or anything. There's no reason for me to ever come here. So does he trigger when you have one half of the medallion? It doesn't matter which half, I believe. I think it's just any half. Okay, so now... Hey, D. I don't believe we've met. I'm Weird. D. We look exactly alike. Alright, I'm not interested. Where's Fia? This way. So, and you, God, I have to listen to even more of Fia's dialogue. Uh, I already skip enough when we do Fortis Axe. Though it is come back, I will take... Okay, I don't know if I have to actually, like, rest or anything. I'm just gonna keep talking to her, see if I can get the stagger. I would you like the blessing? Would you like? Yes. Now. Tell me about the stagger. I think we're done as the trigger anyway. My dear, might I? Could you please? Okay. A certain person gave it to me as a gift. It's a very precious thing. It must have a special place in the owner's heart. So I would like for the original owner to have it back. If you wouldn't mind, then good day. Good day. Key item? There's once a special weapon of gold and silver intertwined, but it is now worn down and marred by a black gash. So, is it from Devon? She obtains it somehow, and then you give it to Darian and it corrupts him or something. I don't really know how it works. I don't believe I'm known as he. I guess we have to listen to this. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts if you're inclined to This makes so much sense when you know what the hell he's talking about. But on a first playthrough, you have no clue what he's saying. I have a what say you? Sure. I mean, I look exactly like you. Well, it will lead you. Yeah, I've been there. Take the stagger. I think I have to go talk to Greg. Oh, never mind. What have we here? How did you get your hand on that dagger? Well, that hardly matters. I know very well whose dagger it is. Why don't I return it to them for you? Good work bringing this to me. I guess I'll rest. I want to stop. I just want to rest. So is he is he here? He's dead. Okay. And he's dead. This way? So the dagger was infected with death blight, I guess. Finally, it is returned to its rightful place. Why are you turning and facing not me? Hallobrand of the exalted noble. And now I must bid you goodbye as well. Though I ask you deliver this message to the round table hold. I am Via. Deathbed companion. Hark round table. So they stole it from Godwin? The death of Godwin. The exalted. We who humbly live. I guess that's the lore. Live in waiting. Is that door open? I can't even tell. One day, welcome our Lord. What right does anyone have to object? Our Lord will rise. The Lord of the many and the meek. 
not open. Okay, anyways. So, what were we doing? We're going back to Lyernia then. Yeah, it's basically how you do four sacks earlier. Oh, I gotta take up the blessing too. Where's the thing? I'm dead. I knew I was gonna die here. <laughs> I couldn't see the I couldn't see the place I needed to land. It's too foggy. I think I jumped too late. Oh no, we're good. I said it last time. I'm gonna be like the first time I'm gonna die is gonna be uh, well aside from the um, the abductor virgin duo. First place I'm gonna die is where I just died. Death of the bird. It's not nighttime, idiots. I gotta do this drop again. It's gonna be a little weird doing four sacks so early too. Why? Why do you bounce off? This jump is cursed. I jumped too late there. That's why. And I gotta make it nighttime again. We're never fighting another boss. We're stuck in a time loop. Oh my god! I thought I was gonna miss that one too. We can play the game now. I love it. It's so satisfying. Shut up, Deathbird. Sorry, Deathright Bird. No, you know what? Deathbird. Don't even get the right to have your full name. It's just so satisfying doing that much damage in one hit. Hate those things. So I think we're at 76 bosses. Because we should have six to get through Magmor and Makar. Royal Revenant, where are you? Mm, nope, back this way. Right here. Can I jump on this to get it to move? No, you actually have to roll. Interesting. Because you can actually jump through illusory walls to make them go away. You can't jump on illusory floors, though. I wonder if they're wholly resistant. I don't really know. Alright, Kari Manor. We got Loretta and the Onyx Lord. And we gotta listen to Ronnie for a little bit. A lot of dialogue in this hour. Yeah, it's funny, though, because I, I I was mentioning when we were talking to D, all of everything he was saying, I'm like, oh my god, it makes so much sense. I was watching my first playthrough back and just listening to, like, my reaction after listening to some NPCs, and I'm just like, what the hell are these guys talking about? Like, when, uh, the Finger Maid- the Finger Maidens? Is that what they're called? No, not Finger Maidens, but, like, the, the husks, like, the old- crone ladies when they were talking just like cryptic stuff i'm like what the hell are they saying there's one thing i was surprised i understood as well as i did i can't remember what it was now i don't remember which npc it was it might have been Enya talking about godric or something how oh, it was the runt no it was something else because that was definitely way more obvious i don't know it's something i was just like how the hell did i pick up on that because it's something i've since forgotten to be honest and have questioned because I haven't heard NPC dialogue in so long. It's really cool, though, like, if you ever do, like, a lore run or something, and you, like, try and look at everything in the game, especially, like, on a first playthrough, you're trying to piece it together, because you don't have all the clues right away. Like, you get some clues, you know, but it's a lot of things you just don't know. And you have your own theories, and they're either, like, disproven or proved right. The more things you gather. Like, you probably know D doesn't... Or don't know that D has a brother. Do that. I think I'm just going to split mind and endurance for a while. Although I don't think I need that much mind. Like, I'm using, what, one sacred blade to fight? I don't know what we're going to get through here. I think we can get through Ray of the Crystal Tunnel. Don't know if we'll get through the Magmorm or not. We'll see. Maybe we do. Maybe we end up in Altus somewhere. I thought we would definitely get back to Altus, but I kind of stalled with Pia's quest line. Oh, 
Oh, true combo. That's right. Take that. Buff. Sacred Blade. And dead. Good idea right now. See you in a couple hours. The real one. Not this fake nonsense. Oops. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. Onyx Lord won't be too hard. Yeah, so I guess uh, I was wrong about the armor. Because this armor is the same. Not unaltered or altered or whatever. Maybe after after you kill D. Or the other D, I guess. Do these have different descriptions? No, they do not. Oh, which armor is he going to get, though? If I give him armor, well, that could be interesting. I didn't think about that. Is he going to take the armor that I got on this cycle? Or is he going to take the armor I'm wearing? I wonder if it's even tied to the armor at all. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's tied to like the quest line, whatever he ends up doing. We can check. I think I'll give him the armor, then I'll just warp back to the grace, and then I'll see if he... Uh... Well, I guess it actually will be obvious, right? Because if I'm not wearing the armor, then I gave him the armor I'm wearing. And think about that. We're not going to be there for a bit, though. We probably got like, another two hours until we're in Nokron. Oh, are we just going to be able to chain charge our twos together and stagger him? One. Oh, yes, we are. Get out of here. That knockback, though. All right, lore time. You know, it would be hilarious and we probably won't get it, but it'd be so funny as if we saw in the DLC like some mech <laughs> boss from Armored Core. <laughs> Just it'd be so out of place, but I think it, I would die laughing if that happened. Mikola is now in Armored Core. Armored Core 7, Mikola's Revenge. Worlds collide. I still want to upload the rest of that playthrough. I have a uh, an Armored Core playthrough. I got my first playthrough up on YouTube, but I never uploaded the, the following two playthroughs where we go all the way to the true ending. It's just been sitting on a hard drive, but I'd like to get it up at some point. I just need to find time to actually edit it. If you have not played Armored Core, though, I mean, maybe it's not your thing. Maybe you don't like mech games, but it's pretty fun. Music is very good. It's just nice to see FromSoft do something else and have it still be like really good. That's what's uh, reassuring, you know? Because then they can take more risks and do other things and hopefully pump out some good stuff. All right, we're going to here, I believe. But yeah, the music in Armored Core. I love, love the music in that game. It's so good. Very different from this, obviously, as you might imagine. I wonder why mech games aren't popular, though. I don't really know why. Not that I think they deserve to be popular, it's just interesting because it's like a genre that doesn't really get a lot of attention. I don't know why. Maybe just the clunkiness of a mech? I feel like it's hard to get away from that. Like, they're big robots, you would think they would be clunky. So this tunnel, we, I guess we could get through... Hmm. Maybe we get up to Magma or Makar. We'll see where we are in like five minutes. Because this is pretty close to when I would call it. I've been known to go longer, though. Sometimes I'll go an hour, ten minutes. I'm at 56 minutes. That's what OBS says. It won't be 56 minutes in the video because I'll, you know, cut out stuff. But try to just record for an hour, cut it down. Whatever is there is there. I think that crossbow run I probably will start soon. Oh, yeah, not, I don't need smithing stones. I just went into autopilot there and I was going to turn and get smithing stones over there. Yeah, I actually, I really am looking forward to the crossbow run in theory, but I know I'm going to hate it when I do it. <laughs> Crossbows don't scale in this game. They're like faster, but lower damage ballistas. You know, if you haven't seen the hand ballista run, and not, probably not a lot of you have, because, you know, it's hard to catch it live. Um, that thing is slow as hell. You probably don't even need to watch my run to know. Like, you could literally just watch any, any hand ballista video at all, and... Or maybe you've tried it. It is very slow. 
crossbows are less slow, but they don't hit as hard. But none of them scale. But I think what they like the fact that they don't scale means they get more like damage per upgrade or whatever. Hopefully. But at least we can put bleed on crossbow. You can't do it for a hand ballista. I don't want this. I want to go back here. Hand ballista might be the, mo the run I'm most proud of, honestly. Just because that's that right card kill, man. What a mess it was. Beautiful mess. That or the rested anchor for different reasons. Just because that one was so fast. Yeah, don't repost, it's fine. I don't know if actually, like, if anyone's actually done all bosses with the hand ballista. I have no idea. No one's done it the way I did it, that's for sure. Probably. I don't know, maybe someone did it in New Game Plus 7. I do not know how you would do right guard with a hand ballista, though, in New Game Plus 7 without, like, glitches. I really don't. You would need some, like, ridiculous damage setup to actually do that fight, because he gets, like, 40,000 more health, and you still only get 80 ballista shots. 20 of them which are fire damage, so... Yeah. I just can't wait until it's uploaded and I don't have to think about it anymore. Till DLC, anyway. Ugh. It'll be interesting to see if, like, you could even do all the bosses with all the weapons in the DLC, or um, maybe they do a Storm King type of thing, where you have a boss that's inaccessible without a certain weapon. I don't feel like they would do that again, though. But maybe they make a boss that, like, can't be damaged with anything but one weapon, for whatever reason. Again, I don't know why they would, but they could. There's no reason they couldn't. I feel like they don't do that generally, though. They definitely guide people towards using a weapon, but they don't make you use that weapon. Even in Armored Core, there was a, a boss kind of similar to, like, the Ormond Reichard, where they wanted you to use one weapon, but you didn't have to. You probably did on a first playthrough, just because it's a first playthrough, but... You actually get some fun dialogue if you don't use that weapon from one of the other NPCs in that mission. I never got it myself, because I always bring it, but I heard it. I guess we'll get through Magma Worm Makar. We're like halfway to him already. And then we can do... What's his face? Uh, or what's their face? Perfumer Trisha and the Misbegotten Warrior next time. Oh, I did figure out... I don't know if I... Like, I can't remember where I mentioned this. I was wondering what sword the Leonine Misbegotten and the Misbegotten Warriors have. I think it's just the Iron Greatsword, which I think you can actually farm from them. The only one that doesn't have it, as far as I know, is the one who has the... What's it called? Oh, I don't remember the name of the sword. The Golden Order Greatsword? That's how it is? The one in the Cave of the Forlorn. I didn't even know about the Iron Greatsword, though. Like, there's still so many weapons I probably don't even know about in this game. And I don't know about a lot of weapons. I've used, fifth, I've used over a sixth of the current weapons. And I guarantee there's probably like 20 or something that I don't remember. I mean, there's 308. There's a lot. Probably a lot of the crossbows, I don't know. And the regular bows. Just because... I don't care. <laughs> They're bows, you know? Some of the other stuff. I don't know that well. Like the Iron Greatsword. It's cool, though. That's, like, the nice thing about learning... Le or doing these runs is you just learn about all these different weapons that are in all these games. What's the last TS2 one? I, I did the Defender Greatsword. No, that, that one's kind of obvious. That's a boss soul. It's like the random weapons you just farm from an enemy that uh, I usually don't know about. I'm trying to think of another good DS2 example, because I feel like DS2 I probably know the least about the weapons, or DS3. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Can't think of any. Off the top of my head. The Old Knight Greatsword in DS2. Like, you know those guys have a sword. But I don't know what the hell it's called. Well, I do now, because I did the run. Or the homunculus mace, all of the collector's edition weapons, basically.
You done? He's not done. Actually not done. He is still not done. This is five in a row. You've reached your peak. Oh, come on. Can you stop? Thank you. Knights Makar. Lost Grace discovered. I don't know why I picked that grace up. I am not coming back here. <laughs> I do that a lot. Just instinctively will touch it. But no, I'm not coming back. So yeah, now we're through 82 bosses. We're just under halfway through everything. And we are six hours in. Three and a half through New Game Plus. Is that right? I think that's right. Need this. Something random I just thought about. If you go into Sage's Cave and you kill Necromancer Garrus, but not the Black Knife Assassin, can you warp out with fast travel? You can warp back to the beginning, I think, after Necromancer Garrus, but I don't know if you can warp out with fast travel unless you kill the Black Knife Assassin. I don't know why I thought of that. I was just thinking about if you're routing, I guess, but it wouldn't make sense to do that now because I don't want to fight an invisible assassin. Like, I have nothing against fighting an invisible assassin other than it's slower, and that's pretty much the reason I don't do it. I fought, like, I think two invisible assassins on these runs, the first two runs I did. After that, I'm like, yeah, I'll just get the torch. I don't feel like using my eyes to watch the water. Two more endurance. All right, we'll call this one here. We'll pick up next time with the Unsightly Catacombs, and then we have a whole lot of Altus to do. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching.